Welcome to GMBN Racing, everybody. It's a big week for cycling as the UCI Mountain Bike World Championships are taking place all over Scotland right now. And today is a great day because I'm going to be catching up with your UCI Downhill Men's Elite World Championship winner, Charlie Hatton. So let's hear what it's like to be world champion. Here he is, the world champ. You're good? Yeah, I'm very good. Thanks. How are you? Yeah, congratulations. Oh, thanks, mate. You, what a day. Uh, Mate, you must be on cloud nine right about now. Yeah, pretty insane. Yeah, I don't really know uh, where my emotions are, to be honest. Right, even now, like what still? Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, still all over the shop. <laughs> Let's sort of go back in time to kind of like the lead up to the race. Did you do like going into it? I know like some riders go to Fort Bill and stuff and they'll they'll get loads of runs in. Did you do anything sort of special or different for, for the run up to this one? Um, nothing special, to be honest. In Val de Sol, I actually hurt my ankle. So I actually put me off the bike for a couple of weeks. Um, so I just tried to use it as a good, like not an excuse to just literally hammer the gym, hammer the training. So I had two or three really strong, good blocks of training, which was looking back is probably, yeah, really, really good. Really good thing. Um, but yeah, riding wise, I went to the, the Ludenville like test event sort of thing. And then we went to Andorra for a couple of days, which was sick. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was all the downhill ride. And I actually went to Antistinog as well. Ah, uh, the and Nog. The, yeah, like a mini Fort William, I guess. So yeah. yeah, we turned up there. There was, it was like a little mini World Cup. Jordan Williams was there. Bernard Kerr was there. I went with Joe Breeden. Rach was there. Hattie Harnden. So yeah, it was a good crew of people actually. Did you do any kind of like bike prep that was different? So I suppose when you went to went to the Nog and stuff like that, was that sort of for bike prep and bike setup and just to get things dialed in, or was it just sort of last sort of big like rough runs and things? Um, to be fair, I think this point in the season the bike is pretty much perfect how I want it. Um, obviously, I think that's why we spent all winter testing and trying new parts on the bike and. Unless something's feeling slightly off with the bike, to be honest, I change clicks here and there. But yeah, the bike's already pretty good to go coming into the race. Okay, so let's move on to sort of Fort William itself. Practice. What did you think? I'm interested to know, like, what were your thoughts on like the track? It had been sanitized a bit, you know, smoothed out yeah. here and there. It was kind of the same track layout, the same track we all sort of love and hate about Fort William at the same time. Yeah. And and practice looked wild and like you know, like top riders were going down like left, right and centre. It looked tough. How did you find practice? Um, practice was pretty fast. Straight away, like the changes they'd made, it was obviously some bigger banked berms and then into like a classic Fort William rough rock garden. Yeah, so yeah. normally you'd hit the rock garden and it'd be rough and nasty, but then you imagine adding another 10 kilometres per hour into that rock garden. So... It did uh, change the dynamic of the track a lot, I think. And yeah, by second run, I remember riding. I was like, I honestly don't think I can go faster than that again. I railed a section. I was like, oh my God, that is probably the best I've ever ridden a bike. I was like, <laughs> I don't know how. I was like, after that, I just toned it down. I did, on the first day, I only did four runs. So I did three runs and I was like, I honestly don't think I can go much quicker. So I did another, I did my fourth run is like a, almost just like a roll down, have a little yeah. look at some lines, attack some sections I wasn't as confident with. Obviously on a big track like that, you've got to factor in fatigue and things like that. So I was, the less runs I could do on the first few days, I was like, the more energy I'm going to have for the final. So Yeah, fan of, fan of the changes, do you think? Um, I absolutely loved the track before. I loved how rough and ragged it was, but um yeah. I did like it. It was good. I think by the end of the weekend, when it all broke down a bit and it got a bit more technical, I think it was yeah really good. Okay, so you, were, you I mean, you were feeling it. So come Qualies Day, you qualified sixth. So you know, and yeah. uh, second in sector two, I think as well. So the pace was was yeah. definitely yeah. there. Did you think right? You know, I'm feeling good here. There could be a podium on or something going here. Yeah. So probably after qualifying, um, well, yeah, I was sixth. Andy was second. And it was quite interesting, actually. We had our GoPros, both of us did, and we both overlaid them side by side. And uh, 
it was so interesting to see the back and forth the whole way down and that was really interesting and we we found out well I made a big mistake in the woods in my qualifying and Andy just flew back past me and then you could see where he was pulling away at the bottom so it was like um it was really good to see that and realize right okay I need to hammer this bit a bit more and he yeah. thought the same at the top because I was pulling away slightly at the top so yeah it was really useful to have that going into the week I thought a medal would have been possible if I had an absolute blind overrun. Yeah. And then after quali, I was like, not far off the podium. I was like, yeah, we can get a, we can get a, a medal here. Yeah. And then obviously it started raining and I was just like, ooh, right, okay, this is good. This is probably good for me because obviously being from the UK, it rains all yeah. the time. It's what we ride in all winter. So I was like, right, here we go then. And then yeah. I was warming up smiling i was yeah pretty happy so, it rained to be honest i think in the dry i don't know i don't know i maybe could have got a medal but winning it i'm not so sure um but yeah in the wet obviously that's my favorite conditions fort william is probably my favorite track yeah i know the track that rides really well in the wet so yeah i just attacked it as if it was dry and i think it actually went a little bit faster than my qualifying run as well in the dry which was cool so all right, yeah. yeah, you've woken up, you know, it's race day. Nervous? Any like kind of game plan? Have you spoken to the team and there was like a, a strategy or anything, or was it just all out? Uh yeah, woke up. I get so nervous on race day. Well, I don't really feel nervous. I just really struggle to eat anything. It's yeah, like my throat it's almost up. closes up and I just cannot eat. And it's yeah. like you obviously you're racing, you need as much fuel as you can, really. So I'm there just like picking up like just like one bit, bit by bit, trying to get something in. And it's been like 20 minutes and I've not even covered a quarter of the plate and I'm like, oh, I can't do it. And like you see Andy looking across the table and he's absolutely just smashed all his breakfast. So I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> uh, so, so there wasn't really a game plan then. It was literally just go for it. Yeah, all I like, guess it's world champs. At the end of the day, you need to, well, you need to give it everything else. Yeah, someone else is going to be giving it everything. So yeah, you just got to, Send it, I guess. And mate, you you flip and sent it. So talk us talk us through your run quickly. What like were you happy with the run when you got down? Was it a smooth run? Like because you came down and you were up by like a, a good little chunk of time. Yeah, it was. It's such a hard track to know, Fort William, if you're going fast because there's some quite crucial crucial sections like out of tight corners. And like, I knew I railed them sections. So I was just like, I know I'm carrying good speed, but yeah, it's a very weird one to link the whole track together. Um, and yeah, the run just was super smooth and no mistakes, really. I think that was the key when I, I haven't really watched everyone's run back yet, but from what people have said, it was just like, um, yeah, people were dabbing here and there and yeah, going slightly offline. And yeah, to be fair, I just had a, really clean smooth and fast run so i think that was that was the key yeah man. well it, obviously it sat you in the hot seat at the end and then you're like you're in the hot seat and you've got like you know guys are ticking off coming down and like you're not getting yeah. budged and you're like hang on it this is you know this is getting a bit closer <laughs> like nerves building i presume um it was really strange actually so in the hot seat i didn't really feel any emotion it was almost just like um not disbelief, but it was like just too yeah. surreal. Sort of yeah, it was so surreal. I was just sat there and obviously you see the big names coming down and they're just sliding in slightly behind you. And I was just like, right, okay. And then when Andy came down, after Andy went into second, um, I knew I had a medal and I was just like, what is going on? I couldn't believe it really. I think that was it. I just couldn't believe what was happening. So yeah, my emotions were almost just like, yeah, all over the place, really. And then obviously, last man down, and you're still in the hot seat. And then, like, I, I, I remember watching that. Like, obviously, everyone just runs on, just yeah. like charges you. I you see like your old man's in there giving you a hug. Andy's yeah. next to you. The team come running on the mechanics, and it's just like it's like a, it's a full on pitch invasion. It was pitch invasion. Yeah, they come in, threw me up in the air. And I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't really know what to do, what to say, because like, obviously, it's from my best previous World Cup result to winning World Champs. It was uh, a fair jump 
So I was just like, it was, yeah, a big shock. Yeah, home home worlds as well, like crazy. home worlds. Yeah, it couldn't have been better. And okay. to share the podium with Andy, obviously my teammate, and then Loza, Team GB. Yeah. yeah, it was insane. Unforgettable, right? Yeah, definitely. I saw like yeah, some of the works. clips of like just getting sprayed and champers in the pits and stuff, and it's just oh, like. Yeah. Yeah, you know, my eyes are still not right from that, actually. I think they bought six big bottles of champagne. I think every single drop went into my eyes. It's in my eyes! Uh, <laughs> fully roosted, yeah. Look, congratulations again. You absolutely smashed it. Thank I mean, you very much. From, from I don't know where you go from here, because obviously, like, you must still be on cloud nine. But um, yeah. you say, like, you're waiting for those big names to come down. You are a big name, dude. You're You're a big name. I guess, yeah. I just got to believe that now. <laughs> yeah, mate, you definitely are. Well, look, congratulations again, mate. Thank you for uh, catching up with us here on GMBN Racing and uh, look forward to seeing the rest of your season. Thank you very much. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, Bye. Charlie. Bye, dude. Cheers. Well, everybody, there we go. Your UCI Downhill Men's Elite World Champion, Charlie Hatton of Afferton Bikes. Incredible to catch up with him and look forward to seeing what the rest of the season holds. Now, don't forget, obviously, you can keep up with all the action here on GMBN Racing and over on the GCN Plus app. But for us for now, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.